Today we're looking at a method called separating variables, which is something that we need to apply when we've got a differential equation that has a mixture of x's and y's um, kind of all mixed up all over the place. And we use separating those variables to be able to go ahead and do the integration and get our differential equation out of it. So the whole premise of what we do is to rearrange that equation to separate the x and the y. We have x on one side, y on the other, and then we can integrate both sides and work through from there. So I should go ahead and show you with an example. So we have this differential equation. Uh, it is a differential equation because it contains this derivative of dy by dx. That also makes it a first order differential equation. So that's not important right now. What the problem is that we've got to begin with is we've got these x's and y's are all mixed up over here. So we can't just go and integrate that thing to work out um, what y would be. Because remember, we're trying to get to a general solution with these things where we go y equals something plus c. So we can't just straight away integrate this because we've got the x and the y all mixed together. So what we need to do is rearrange so we have all the x's on one side and all the y's on the other, and then we can integrate. Now to do that, we kind of um, forget that dy by dx is something that you know means derivative and equation. We just treat it like this is any kind of algebraic fraction. And we bring the 1 minus y up onto the left hand side to match it with the dy and we take the dx over to the right hand side to match it with the x there. So we bring this 1 minus y, leave the dy there, leave 1 plus x where it is and bring the dx over here. So kind of like we're multiplying both sides by 1 minus y and we're also multiplying both sides by dx. So now we have something that's got all of the x's on one side and all of the y's on the other and we integrate both sides of that. So I'm just going to pop that integral sign. So if we integrate 1 minus y, we get that the 1 becomes y, the minus y becomes minus y squared over 2. Now, I am going to put plus c here for now, but I'm going to talk about, I'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, then the 1 plus x, if we integrate that, we get x plus x squared over 2 plus c. So you can see on both sides we have a plus c. Now since that plus c is an arbitrary constant, we don't need it in both places. If it's just a number here and it's just a number there, then we may as well just say, well, it's just a number in one of those spots. Um, we don't have to change it to being 2c or anything like that because we haven't actually allocated it a value yet. It just is some placeholder for a constant that we don't know yet. And so now we have our general solution to that differential equation. You might be asked to go on and do other things. It could be find particular solution or rearrange this into some format. Um, we'll just leave that one there for now. Let's take a look at another example. So we've got dy by dx is equal to 10xy. So we need to bring the y over to the left hand side. So we're dividing through by y. We get 1 over y dy. We take the dx over to the right hand side we get 10x dx, and we will integrate both sides. So if we integrate 1 over y with respect to y, we get the natural log of y. And if we integrate 10x, we'll get 10x squared over 2, so that becomes 5x squared plus c. Now I picked this one to go through because you can actually go a little further with this and you might be asked to and need to recognize that it goes into a different format. So if we need to go a step further and write this as y equals something, we need to undo the natural log. So to do the opposite of that, we do e to the power of. So y becomes e to the power of 5x squared plus c. Now if you remember your laws of exponents, that's the same as e to the 5x squared multiplied by e to the c. Now e is a constant and c is just a constant, so we can wrap that up in another type of constant. So instead of calling it e to the c, if we just call that some other constant now that's usually given a capital letter of a, don't ask me why, just as, um, and so then that becomes a e to the 5x squared. Or you might, instead of having an A, it's often given a capital K instead to represent a different constant. Um, so you might see that sort of notation as well. It doesn't matter what you call it, but just recognize that this format here 
can be rearranged into this format that we've got down at the bottom here.